blasts his accuser, labeling his charges as basic and temptable lies. First, we have this man, Owen Lattimore, a man commonly referred to as the architect of our Far Eastern policy. I ask people questions on the street. I take their picture. You're teasing me. <laughs> what is it? I, I have a trick back. Um, goes out on me. Could you help me back to the chair? Um, quietly and just to pretend we're walking back to the table. I aggravated it again during the war. Sometimes the uh, pain is so bad I need crutches to get up and down the steps of the Capitol. I had no idea. Hardly anyone does. So far, we've managed to keep it out of the uh, papers, thanks to our friends in the press. Why keep it a secret? Well, I am running for the Senate, for God's sake. Uh, wouldn't do much of my chances if people saw pictures of me hobbling around like a cripple. Are you sure you can manage to drive yourself home? What? Not going to ask me in? No. When can I see you again? Call me. What are you doing 4th of July weekend? with you. Come to Texas with me next month. A political appearance? I know, I know, which you haven't done once since the election. Uh, it's a chance to be together. I would love to come to Texas with you. Really. You'd love to, really. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think we're making progress. At least Hoover is willing to admit the existence of organized crime. Jack ought to get rid of him. <laughs> it's not that easy. The old man knows where all the bodies are buried. Bobby, sorry to interrupt. It's Mr. Hoover on the phone. He says it's important. Speak of the devil. Excuse me. Thank you for the lunch, Mrs. Kennedy. Well, you're very welcome. Kennedy.
president, you certainly can't say Dallas doesn't love you. The presidential car coming up now. We know it's the presidential car. You can see Mrs. Kennedy's pink suit. There's a Secret Service man, Spread Eagle, over the top of the car. We can't see who has been hit, if anybody's been hit, but apparently something is wrong here. Something is terribly wrong. The president of the United States is dead. President Kennedy has been assassinated. It's official now. The president is dead. told me they can't turn on the air conditioning until we take off. Why are we waiting? I want to go home. They're waiting on a church. Lyndon wants to be sworn in before we fly. Jackie, honey, they want to take some pictures up the swearing in to, to reassure the people that the government's still working. Lyndon would like you to stand next to him. I had a piece of his skull in my hand. Right here. I kept pressing it onto his head. I kept trying to put it back. Let's get someone to get you out of those clothes. Oh, no. I want them to see what they've done to Jack. Your father has been shot. They took him to a hospital, but they couldn't make him better. So he's gone to visit Patrick. Patrick was so lonely in heaven. He didn't know anyone there. Now he has the best friend anyone could have. And your father will be so very glad to see Patrick. But what will daddy do in heaven? Um, well, I'm sure God will give him lots of things to do because he was always such a busy man. And God has made your daddy a guardian angel for you and for Mama and for John. And he'll look after us. Did Daddy take his big plane with him?
Look up, Mommy, taught me. That's very good, son. None of us could have imagined a day like today would ever come. My first thought is Jack would have wondered what all the fuss was about. Jack wasn't much for pomp and ceremony. I'm sure he'd rather we were all in a bar somewhere laughing and telling stories. And we'll do that in honor of his memory. But not today. One of Jack's favorite poets was Aeschylus, who wrote, even in our sleep, pain which cannot forget falls drop by drop upon the heart until in our own despair against our will comes wisdom through the awful grace of God. It's all right. You can take that now. 